it appears that President Trump just found out that if he and Mike Pence were incapacitated by COVID-19, that it wouldn't be a successor that somebody, you know, that, that Donald Trump uh, would be able to pick, by, pick himself. It would be the Speaker of the House, which would be Nancy Pelosi. Uh, that's why he just flipped out on Twitter. In a response to a tweet from John Solomon that read this, that, that reads, uh, quote, Pelosi would be third in line to serve as president if Trump and Pence became incapacitated by COVID-19. To which he responded that we, <clears throat> that we must be very careful. Crazy Nancy would be a total disaster and the USA will never be a communist country. Now, look, I'm going to get to the absurdity of conflating Nancy Pelosi to being anywhere near the left. But first, um, the Presidential Succession Act of 1947 makes very clear that the Speaker of the House is third in line to the presidency should both the president and vice president become too ill to carry out their duties or die. And look, we just recently had a situation where members of the White House have been tested positive for COVID-19. You had Mike Pence's uh, press secretary, uh, Katie Miller, wife of Stephen Miller, sorry, um, getting sick with COVID-19. And you had Trump's uh, personal valets and a number of Secret Service officers coming down and testing positive for the virus. It's spreading around the White House. The, the virus is literally in the White House. Uh, so that's a concern. Uh, now, the act states, uh, the Presidential Succession Act of 1947, says in case of the removal of the president from office or, or of his death, resignation or inability to discharge the powers and duties of the said office, the same shall devolve on the vice president and the Congress may by law provide for the case of removal, death, resignation, and inability, both the president and vice president. So that's a situation in which we could see, of course, a President Pelosi. Yikes. Uh, now, look, people near uh, Pence, uh, Pence and Trump, of course, as I mentioned, had gotten sick. And yet both of them decide, uh, have declined to wear a mask. Because masks have become a political signal uh, of being manly and strong, apparently. Like, you know, I'm not going to let the government tell me what to do. I don't know why I'm doing the Trump voice for like MAGA guys. Uh, but like, the government not going to tell me what to do. I'm not going to wear a mask. No, real Americans don't wear a mask. We carry our guns and we go to Subway. Yeah, okay, man. All right. Uh, so it's a political statement against like, I guess what they call the creeping authoritarianism of a temporary lockdown where they're little, where the government's literally paying you to sit on your butt and watch Netflix. Man, if that's tyranny, that's kind of nice. Actually, I like that. Uh, but okay. So now it's a sign, of course, that these people don't care about other people, um, would rather spread their COVID around to everybody and don't believe in facts, logic, or science. And, and in fact, you know, I've seen signs where uh, COVID's a hoax. Doesn't exist. It's not real. Nobody, none of the 80,000 people that have died in America from COVID have actually died, uh, you know, the, you know uh, uh, crisis actors, et cetera. Whatever crazy right-wing nonsense that they come up with to basically bury the fact that, look, and look, under any president, this would be an absolute disaster. Uh, but under Trump, it's, it's actually worse than it, than it could have been. And so that's one of the big problems is that it's worse than it could have been. So now... To Pelosi, if she became president, and again, that this, this is making everyone's head explode uh, because, you know, leftists like myself are like you. Uh, and then, of course, you got Trumpers that flip out for the completely different reason. Um, but in reality, look, should, would she be competent? Yes. Would she do anything bold like Medicare for all or Green New Deal or really anything to change the post-COVID landscape into something better? No, absolutely not. No, she would be establishment, uh, you know, continues with the status quo. That's the problem, right? I mean, her big, bold ideas were allowing the government to pay part of COBRA. COBRA, of course, being the, uh, not the, no, not the COBRA commander or anything like that, 
uh, but a continuation of your employee sponsored health insurance or I'm sorry, employer sponsored health insurance, right? They would pay part of the employer part, whereas you would still end up having to pay your premiums, co-pays and deductibles to keep your insurance in the case that you were laid off as a result of COVID, right? So you would still have those costs despite not actually having a job. Well, well, congratulations. How bold. Whereas, of course, progressives, leftists uh, are saying, hey, let's get a Medicare for all system, actually, and ensure that uh, everybody has guaranteed health care. And not this like weak stuff from I think it was uh, Joe Kennedy that tweeted the other day. It's like no one should have to go bankrupt from uh, medical bills without a lawyer by their side. What are you talking about? Lawyer, get get the F out of here. Nobody should have to go bankrupt from medical bills, period. Period. End of sentence. You know how we get there? By eliminating medical bills completely. Medicare for all. We didn't stutter. That's what we want. But uh, anyway, uh, so now she's also been using her power speaker to Muzzle progressives in Congress, of course, uh, with unanimous consent votes that, look, that prevent progressive members, of course, from putting any sort of progressive priorities to these coronavirus uh, relief bills, right? Because if somebody tries to slip in something progressive with this unanimous consent, well, you would have a Republican, which they have a minority in the House. Uh, Any one Republican could stand up and say, shoot down that bill. Not going to be in favor of it. In fact, Thomas Massey has already done so uh, earlier to some coronavirus release bills. So that's why they had to rush to get another one out. That was just a gigantic bailout. Pelosi could have changed those rules. She decided not to. And she also dragged her feet on remote voting, uh, which, w- of course, allowed these unanimous consent votes to, to happen. She also appointed Representative Donna Shalala to be her designee and a board to oversee this massive corporate bailout fund. You know, the the fund that, of course, could be leveraged many, many times uh, to trillions of dollars in corporate, do- uh, in, in just corporate handouts. And that's it. Uh, and of course, Shalala has her own issues. Um, she is not aggressive uh, about this, you know, about policing this, about ending this corruption because her, her, you know, she herself has some issues with corruption. She has violated ethics rules by failing to disclose hundreds of financial transactions that she has undertaken during the her year or so in office. So, hmm, interesting. Shady financial transactions hidden. And yet she gets to be on this on this board to oversee the Treasury Department handing out trillions of dollars to corporations. Right. Laughable. Or it would be if it wasn't this enormous robbery from the taxpayer. She also had numerous chances to exercise her authority and try to get progressive policy into these stimulus bills. Like, for example, uh, here you have a a, a bill that came out last month. It was uh, Representative Rokana working with Representative Tim Ryan. So this is this is a you know a, a joint bill by the moderate and progressive wing of the Democratic Party in the House. And so this had look this had moderates that were willing to come on board. This was a two thousand dollar a month UBI stimulus, right? That would have made it into the package. Pelosi is like, nope, not at all. You also had bills that would cancel student debt. She allowed Republicans to tank it. She allowed them by doing these unanimous consent, uh, you know. Uh, well, actually, she didn't even put those in the bill. And here's what she should have done, right? If she w- were actually interested in doing anything to help the American people, pass that legislation, send it off to the Senate, and let them vote against student lo- uh, loan debt cancellation and $2,000 a month UBI. Let them do that, right? But like the Republicans, her focus was on massive giveaways to the rich uh, while allowing some crumbs to trickle down to working people. So you want to call her communist? Communist? Really, please. 
communists. No, no. Republicans and corporate Democrats give out more socialism, since we're conflating terms here, right, uh, than anyone could ever dream. But of course, it's corporate socialism. So when it comes to members of Congress, it's fine. Well, that's our donors. And we have to, you know, give our donor, uh, donors a return on investment. But if you try to do something for the people, Pelosi is going to be the first one there to squash it, to make sure that it doesn't happen. Remember, her big idea before, you know, we ended up getting the $1,200 a month when the first, uh, was it phase three coronavirus stimulus was being debated, is she wanted refund, uh, refundable tax credits as part of the uh, coronavirus relief bill. Refundable tax credits. Donald Trump and Steve Mnuchin were the ones calling for the one $1,200 direct check. In that case, the Republicans, Donald Trump was to the left of Nancy Pelosi. So I don't know what the hell you're talking about when you call her a communist. That's ridiculous. No, no, no. Leftists actually wish that we had a leader, the Speaker of the House, that was a member of the left. We don't. No, no, no. Nancy Pelosi is a Republican on economic issues and a centrist on social issues. But still, the fear in Donald Trump of someone halfway competent leading instead of him, and more importantly, him not being able to pick someone like Ivanka or Jared Kushner to go and take over, well, that's more than enough to make him absolutely lose it. Now, is it enough to get him to start wearing a mask? To, you know, put his health over his vanity? Well... I mean, that remains to be seen. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the you guys the viewers instead of big corporate ads look you know the show you know how i'm not in favor of big corporations anyway so help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron patreon.com slash tyt nation that goes a long way to help us keep the lights on and you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media